Good afternoon and welcome to Dixon City Academy in association with BBC School Report. This is Rabia and I'm Robert. On the programme today we take a look at cashless catering one year on. Also we have an interview with the Minister for Sport, the Right Honourable Mr Jerry Sutcliffe MP. The Frank bus rolls into Dixon's and we get on board to learn about harmful drugs. On Monday the band editors played a sellout crowd at St George's Hall. We sent Rachel to check them out. And finally, we have an interview with Billy Pierce as he completes his 11th Bradford pantomime. Good afternoon. Our first report looks at cash catering and what effect it has had on the students and staff one year on, who has cashed in and who's checked out. Cash is catering is one year old here at Dixon's, but has the investment been worth it? Does the system run more smoothly or have the queues just moved to another area? We put these questions to the principal, Mr Weller. I think it's been a success in all, in all sorts of ways really. Um, it, you know, students are less inclined to lose, lose money during the day, we get less of a problem with that. Um, it's much better for people with free school meals, they can just they use the same system as everybody else and they can top it up in the same way as everybody else. It's quicker on the tills, so the queues on the tills are uh, shorter and people come through the till quicker. I think that was the, the, the first thing we noticed about the system. So I think all around it has been a big success. We asked the catering manager, Mrs. Spy, what she thought of the system. I think it's been extremely successful. It's had its hiccups as our new systems do, but now it's settled down and everything's in place, it seems to be fine. Mrs. Pipe is obviously in favour, but can the same be said of the students? What do they think? I think it's a bit of a, a new idea that's, that could work well in this school because obviously everyone can quickly whack their finger on and get through as quick as possible. Because we have a, quite a small canteen, it, I think it's been quite successful. I don't like the fact that there's only two machines and there's large queues. I think there should be more machines or more places to put your finger on. It's a good idea um, because it's easy to have, um, if you've got your fingerprint, it's easy to identify who's got what and then you can't cheat for the money and stuff, you can get the exact change and it's really easy to use. To be honest, I think it's just creating an extra queue. The, the whole idea really was to prevent there being a larger queue in the canteen, making it quicker to get through. But I think that all it's really done is made it more difficult for students to get through as quick as they were. It works. I didn't think it would work. I thought, you know, it might be a bit dodgy sometimes. It works. But I don't think it reduces the queues that much. Uh, I think it's been a success. I think um, the lines go a lot quicker now. And it's a lot easier not bringing the money around school. So that's a big um, improvement, really. Investment has been very expensive. Has this been responsible for pushing up the prices? No, it hasn't, because we don't make that kind of investment out of that kind of money. Have you seen how much prices have gone up? Wow. Chips used to be so cheap, now they're really, really expensive. Uh, the prices are okay, because like, in other schools they're a bit dearer, but um, if you get like the meal deal, it's good value for money. Uh, no, not at all. The prices are exactly the same as they were. They are actually only increased one time per year, which is when you come back in August at the beginning of the new academic year and that is usually in line with inflation. So there you have it. Some students think that the prices are too high but the majority think they're good value. However, on the whole, cash scheduling has been a success. This is Iram reporting for Dixon's TV for BBC School Report. Well thank you Iram. We hope everyone's comments will be taken on board to help improve the school further. How would you like to go to every major sporting event in the world? The dream has come true for the Minister for Sport in Bradford, Mr Jerry Sutcliffe MP. Lydia and Zaki spent the morning in our brand new television studio. Let's see what happened. And thank you for agreeing to be interviewed today. Good morning. How did you first get involved in politics and how do you think we can get young people and more, inter more interested in the process? I first got involved um, through my trade union work. I was a trade union member at a Bradford company called Field Packaging and I got involved with the uh, union there and eventually politics came from that and I became a local councillor uh, in Bradford in 1982 and obviously things grew from there but I think you're right we also need to look at new ways of getting young people involved in politics because the route that I took um, perhaps is no longer available and whether it's through the internet or finding ways that you can contact young people to get them interested. What I found is most people are interested in political issues, whether that's the environment, health, education, jobs, but it's hard for people to know where to go or how to get involved. 
The Winter Olympics have just finished in Vancouver. Did you attend? And if so, how was it? I did attend. It was excellent. Um, it obviously had a very slow start and a sad start because one of the athletes was killed, a Georgian athlete was killed on the first uh, weekend as they were preparing for the Winter Olympics. And they did have some problems relating to the weather because it was a lot warmer in Vancouver than they expected, which affected the snow. But as the Games developed, a, a strong national pride came out in Canada. And um, it was great to see, and I was fortunate to be able to be at the USA-Canada ice hockey final, which the Canadians won 3-2 in overtime, which was very exciting. But it also gave us an insight into how you develop and uh, you watch what goes on in the Games, because clearly we're all excited about having our uh, Summer Olympics in London in 2012. So we picked up a lot of useful information about how to deal with transport problems, how to deal with VIPs, so it was very good. If the World Cup in South Africa this year, will you be going? And if so, what do you think England's chances are of winning the World Cup? I'd like to think that I could go. I've been to South Africa uh, in the last couple of years looking at the preparations for the World Cup in 2010. I think it would be a fantastic occasion for the country. Uh, as far as the England team is concerned, I was lucky enough to be at Wembley on Wednesday to see them beat uh, Egypt, England beat Egypt. And I think that we've got the players. Um, it's just a case now of making sure that we can apply ourselves in the big competitions. And uh, it's a very difficult group that we've got in the uh, World Cup. But uh, you know, if they play to their abilities, we could do very well. And finally, Minister, can you give us an exclusive and tell us what day the, the election is going to be? The only person that knows what day the next general election uh, will be is the Prime Minister. But I think that the indications are that we will be looking at May the 6th, which is the same day as the local elections. But as I say, that's only my guess. Uh, the only person that knows is the Prime Minister. Thank you once again for making the time to come and visit us here at Dixon. Thank you, Mr Jerry Sutcliffe, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and spend the morning with some Dixon City Academy students. We are looking forward to the London 2012 Olympics. We've all seen the eye-catching Frank adverts, but let's look at how your eight students reacted when the Frank bus came to Dixon City Academy. We asked Olivia to investigate. We are here today in Dixon City Car Park on the freezing weather to interview some children about the Frank bus that has come to Dixon's to talk about drugs. We will be asking students if it has helped them in any way. I asked the man in charge, Tana Hassan, if the bus had been a success. Um, it's a great big success. I think um, it could qualify to go around all year round, but we only do 20 weeks a year at the moment. Um, but it is very successful. We do see 300 kids a day. Um, five days a week for 20 weeks a year, so it's, it's quite busy. I asked the teacher here at the academy, Mr Danjal, if he thought what had been learnt could be extended into the classroom. I think definitely, I think what we can do is take what students have learnt in the bus and obviously we'll be giving more information uh, back in the classroom so we can extend on stuff because obviously we've only got limited time in the bus so um, being in the classroom we can expand on certain things, so certain, looking at certain particular drugs, uh, so definitely it extends into the classroom. But what about the opinions of the students? What have they learnt? Um, a lot because now I know where I can go to like if I need any information on drugs or rope because there's like um, a centre in Bradford. Well it's actually, um, I've never been in a bus like it but it's given me a lot more information on drugs that I knew about, some names I've never heard of and all this information on the, on the roof is um, things I've never heard of before. But it was really good and it like taught you a good lesson because you like saw what your face would look like if you actually took drugs and I don't want that to happen really. Thank you for watching our short footage on the Talk to Frank bus. We hope it's learnt you a lot as it has to the students here at Dixon City Academy. And this is Olivia reporting for Dixon's at BBC School Report. Thanks to the Frank bus and team for informing Year 8 students about the dangers of drugs and hope many other school children can benefit from the bus. The editors have been at St George's Hall this week and we sent our entertainment reporter to find out if they are hitting the right note. Here we are at St George's Hall where tonight the Birmingham based band editors performed to a sellout crowd. We met up with drummer Ed Lear and I asked him how the band first got together. Um, well, we actually all met at university. We did a course in music technology. They were working together in, on the same course during the day. Who were the band's musical influences? One of the most important bands for us was Elbow, a Manchester band who uh, 
they just write beautiful songs. Tonight is sold out. How is the tour going overall? Oh, I hope it's sold out, is it? Oh, yeah, brilliant. It's going really well. I've got quite a big production in this time, so it's, it's a new show for us to do. Did the band see each other when you're not working? Uh, we all live in different cities now, um, e even different countries. Uh, Russell and Chris live in New York, and uh, I'm, I'm in Birmingham and Tom's down in London, so not really. <laughs> If you wasn't in a band, what um, do you think you'll be doing now for a living? I've, I've got a quite an interesting carpentry, so I might I might be making cupboards in my shed. Do you have any advice for any um, musicians? The strongest advice I could give is to never think that your that your songs are. You've got a formula for the, for your songs. You've always got to keep on writing and keep on trying to improve on what you're doing. Otherwise, you'll stutter a little bit. So. And thank you for being to be this interview. And hope that your gig goes really well tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm Rachel, reporting for Dixon City Academy, BBC School Report. Thank you, Rachel, and the editors for your time. And hope your new album will be just as successful as the first two. And finally, Panto season comes to an end. Oh no, it hasn't. Eleven years standing and still going, Billy Pierce has been a local celebrity in pantomimes and is the face of the Alhambra. Now let's see what happened when Billy met Elliot. Here we are at the Bradford Alhambra, one of the most famous pantomime theatres in the country. Currently coming to the end of its run is Jack and the Beanstalk. Today we are going to speak with its star, who has become synonymous with pantomime in Bradford, Billy Pierce. I asked Billy why he thought the people of Bradford held him in such high esteem. Um, I haven't got a clue really. I, I suppose I'm a local lad, so that's one thing. And um, I work hard. When I first came in, I was second on the bill to um, somebody famous. And um, the people loved the underdog a bit. So I was uh, on stage for about an hour and a half, and he was on stage for about 20, 20 minutes in total. So they asked me if I'd come back as top of the bill and I've been coming back sort of ever since really. This is my 11th time. What's it been like working with Gaynor Fair, Leanne Jones and Tony Adams? But funnily enough, pantomimes are a very odd thing because it's like Big Brother really gone mad. Because you're all chucked into this environment and you're in here about 10 hours a day and if you get a bad apple, somebody who's not very nice, um, it can affect the show and the work and you know the whole atmosphere of it. I didn't know Gainer at all, but she's, uh, I'm now president of the Gainer Fair Appreciation Society because she's wonderful. She never stopped smiling and she always puts her heart and soul into everything and she's wonderful. Le Leanne's, it's her first pantomime, but she's been in Hairspray in London and she's been very successful in that, straight from college really, which is, so it's all happened a bit quick for her. And um, she's enjoyed herself. And Tony, um, um, he's done loads of stuff, Tony, and he's a lovely, kind, gentle, nice man. Do you have a favourite pantomime line? I think my favourite line in this, uh, this pantomime is uh, when the dame says, we're going ha to have to pay that ransom. And I say, yeah, no, and it's all my fault. He said, we're going to have to sell everything. No, surely not everything. We're go even going to have to sell the C-O-W. And I said, no. Not the dog. <laughs> well, that's a nice, nice line, isn't it? However, the question on everybody's lips is will Billy make it 12 in a row? I'm coming here again next year for my sins. Uh, they're advertising already and they've sold a load of tickets. There you have it. 11 years and still going strong. Don't forget to come and see Billy next year as Muddles in Snow White. This is Elliot reporting for Dixon City Academy and BBC School Report. Thank you, Billy and Elliot. We hope to see Billy on stage for years to come. Thank you for watching. This is Robert and Rabia saying goodbye from Dixon's TV and BBC School Report. Enjoy your afternoon.